back to the past is alive hope you guys are all doing well I just recently went through my entire collection of desert shield cards from 1991 been wanting to do that for a while and finally got around to it today and I'm trying to complete this set by hand and I say I'm about halfway there somewhere around that so I went on trading card database printed out the checklist 792 cards in this set and we're gonna check out all the ones I have now and then I'm gonna go through later and cross these off now, normally I keep sets in boxes, but I feel like in my old age, I am more inclined to put these in a binder. I just think it's better for display. And uh, also, most of these cards are in penny sleeves or not sleeved at all. Uh, better protection in binders. So I'm going to be doing that here real soon. But we're going to go through all of the Desert Shield cards that I have so far um, and piecing together this set. So right off the bat here... These are all in chronological order. We got Darren Fletcher and Paul Ossenmacher. These are actually probably two of the most recent ones I picked up. Uh, most of these are in good shape. Some are a little off center. Some have minor blemishes. Like this one has a little crease up here. These are two that I picked up um, right before all the stuff went down at an antique mall um, for 50 cents a piece. So those are pretty good. Most of the time, commons, the Desert Shield commons are around five bucks a piece. A lot of the time from whenever I've seen them. And the stars... They can get pretty high, and the Chipper Jones rookie card is the most valuable card in this set. Um, usually for one raw, I see them go for around 500 bucks. PSA 10 is a whole crap load of money. So, anyways, the first two down, Storm Davis. You can see what differentiates these between the regular 91 tops, the seal on every single one of these. And I did a video a while back um, discussing ways to spot counterfeits. These cards are uh there are a lot of counterfeits out there that people have produced over the years and there's different ways to tell too judging by the seal and also the back as well a black light test i'll post a link to that video uh, that i did a while back in the description in case you guys missed it Allie hammerker one that always haunts us in 1990 tops but the same amount of cards they're all the same except for the shield is what separates these from regular, regular 91 tops i'm not gonna read all the names off mcdowell chris sabo Fan favorite there. Will Can Boyd, Pat Borders. Definitely, I kept the singles in here just to show you all the ones I have. I'll probably take those out at some point. I don't know, maybe put them in a lot on eBay or something like that. Rick Honeycutt, Junior Ortiz, Cito Gaston, and it's a Darren Dalton. Pretty cut, pretty bad there. Tartable. Greg Colburn, a rookie card. And here's a cool one. Uh, Carl Everett, his rookie card. Always like that one. But uh, uh, what really kickstarted my uh, collection with these is Joe Carter, Paul O'Neill. The Honey Hole, some of you guys may have seen the video from quite a while back. He had a decent sized collection of these. I want to say there's like over 250. Here's a nice Ozzy Smith off center, but. Still a nice one. It's a, a kind of a more expensive card to pick up. And um, the checklist cards, kind of weird. These ones don't have any way to signify um, that I know of between Desert Shield and regular 91 Tops. There's no seal on here. I've looked online. I couldn't really find any information about it. I've seen ones that are PSA graded that almost like there's error cards in here. Like the PSA grades point out certain cards um, that are supposed to be a different player. It's kind of interesting. I, I have to look into it more. But, um, yeah, as far as I know, there's no way to tell the difference between the two of those. Randy Reddy. I think I picked this up at an antique mall, too. A little blemish there. A couple of Jane Moyers. Ray Palacios. That car is always pretty funny. But I have... I have a few Hall of Famers. Like I said, they're more expensive. You know, some of them are significantly more expensive than the regular commons in the set, like the Griffey's, Nolan Ryan, Ripken, stuff like that. You'll pay a good bit more money for. But anyways, as I was saying earlier, I picked these up at the Honey Hole about a year ago, something like that. He had this whole box. Um, it still has the original tag on it, actually. Left it on there for whatever reason. So over over 225 different ones. I think he sold to me for 50 bucks. Love that place. Definitely miss going there. 
but uh, definitely a good deal for over 225 cards for 50 bucks. Like I said, a lot of times if you look on eBay, stuff like that, these are selling for about five bucks a piece for commons. And the semi star is a little more. The star is obviously a good bit more. Brian Barnes, rookie card. Greg Gagne, cool shot. A couple Tim Wallachs. The seal, the seal on those ones is a little faded off. And a couple wild letters as well. Definitely kind of tough to tell counterfeits as far as the seal goes. You have to look really close, almost getting magnifying glass. But like I was saying before, I'm going to put these on a binder. And then uh, go through and try to piece together, pick up the ones that I need. Jeff King, Johnny Ray. I actually have one of his. Somebody sent me this a while ago. Sitting next to me, it's a PSA 8. Pretty awesome and I do have another one that's not in here Wade Boggs was actually the very first one I bought and a slew of Marquise Grissoms looking really pissed off <laughs> and of course John Wath and I think those were sent to me by somebody as a gag but definitely appreciated because I needed them Rafael Palmeiro is a nice one too Manny Lee a couple of his so there's definitely a decent amount of doubles in here not as many as I thought I had and Gary Carter is a nice Hall of Famer. Charlie Hayes. So, finding that box lot full of these has made me uh, think, hey, I could probably put this set together because to buy a box of these, the last box of Desert Shield cards I saw in person, as you may have heard me say before, it was at a card show and it was $8,800. So $8,800 for a wax box of these. Nice Dave of Justice. Second year card, and also second year Larry Walker, a gold cup of him. That's a pretty awesome one. I'm sure that probably increased in value since he got into Cooperstown. Sid Bream. And a couple Tim Raines, too. I think those were part of the lot whenever I bought it. But uh, it made me think it was possible to complete the set, so I've been looking online. I really haven't looked too much lately. Like I said, I've had these in this box. Matt Williams, Larkin is a nice one, the all-star card. He has another base in this set, and Soso is also a really nice one, too. And Alex Cole, Andy Van Slyke, Delano, Gold Cup, a couple bankheads, Vicente Palacios, a couple of everyone's favorite, Zane Smith, and also a fan favorite, Greg Swindell. So, over 8000 bucks for a wax box. Now, I've seen these pop up on Mercari. There was a point where there was a guy on there that was selling... It's the same guy. He said he, he, he bought a storage locker that had a, like a half case of these in there. And he was selling for like 1500 bucks, which is definitely a good deal if they're legit. I was very uncertain. I think he was in California, so he was across the country and... That's a hefty amount of money to spend and possibly risk getting, you know, counterfeit cards or search packs or whatever else. So I dragged my feet on it and then it was too late and somebody else bought it up. But Mercari, I see a lot of Chipper Jones rookie cards pop there for like 100 bucks. And um, like I said, there's certain ways to tell if they're counterfeit or not. But I just, I don't really feel very confident about buying these online without seeing them in person. Couple of Jose Leans. I would have loved that car as a kid. My personal favorite there for a couple of years. Eric Davis. Tim McIntosh. McIntosh. Rookie card. Pat Combs. There's Dave Stewart. Louis Quinones. A couple of his cards. Kevin Brown and cool Fred Lynn there. So most of these are centered up pretty good, and the corners are sharp in a lot of them. And here's kind of close to being an iconic card, the Mark Witten. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the handover board, which is kind of weird because uh, going through 91 Tops, I've ripped you know, quite a few packs and boxes of these, and there are other cards in this set where um, you know certain parts, hat, arm, hands, whatever, go over the border, but the Mark Witten is the desired and pretty valuable error card. If you could find one with his hand over the border, that outside border, you're looking at 50 or 60 bucks raw, maybe even a little more. Andres Galarraga. And Burt Blalem's a nice one, too. I just caught this earlier. It's kind of weird. There's the 
printing blemishes on there. Kind of in the exact same spot, but there's one over his head in, in this one. This is, I'll probably end up, I don't know, selling this one off, the one that's off-center, and keeping that one, putting the binder. Dave Winfield's a nice one, too. Pretty good centering on that one. Hal Morris, I always thought that car was pretty crazy. He just looks freaked out. <laughs> we'll see if we can see any of these, um, these other cards where they're, certain parts of them are going over the border. I just noticed that as of recently. I was going through some Lupinella. This one, the shield's kind of pressed off a little bit there. So these are pretty hard to track down nowadays. Not so much if you're on eBay, but flea market stuff like that, you don't really come across them very often. And there's virtually absolutely no way to tell Scott Scudder. If you see a pack of 91 tops, there's a chance that it could be Desert Shield. And I see packs of these sell for 100 bucks, just one pack by itself online. So they're pretty, pretty hot item. And um, there's a Milky Wilson, a couple of his. There's literally no way to tell unless you actually open the pack up. I bought a few 91 Tops wax boxes recently and had to open a pack right away to check and see if they were Desert Shield or not. They, uh, unfortunately, they weren't. Bobby Bonilla, it's one of the first ones I picked up at an antique mall. I think for like three or four bucks. That uh, also kind of kick-started me into collecting this whole set. Benito, off-center there. And a few Gary Reedus's. Honestly, that was with the Bobby Bow for like three or four bucks. But I want to do this video today before I put them on a binder. I just think it's easier to sift through them like this than uh, to, you know, try to film a bunch of pages. Three John Candelarias. That one is cut pretty bad. Probably keep the third one there. That one's centered up pretty good. Danny Gladden, Carmelo Martinez. I really cared for him too much. This is a stint with the Buckos. Daryl Hamilton and <laughs> coming in hot at the very end, Eric Plunk. And our checklist card. And like I said before, virtually no way to tell um, if this, you know, this between this one and a regular 91 Tops checklist. But that's the, what I have in the set so far. I wanted to share that with you guys. So I got, you know, several stars, several Hall of Famers in there. Definitely no. Huge names, like I said, no Bonds, no Griffey, Nolan Ryan, Ripken, but um, I plan on picking those up sometime soon and piecing this together. And once I do, I will give you an update. But if you see these anywhere for a good price, definitely pick them up because it seems like they just keep going up in price and uh, value. And here, actually, one more card to show you. I think this is also one of the first ones that I found the Wade Boggs. This was seven bucks, which I thought was an amazing deal whenever I saw it. And upon doing the black light test and looking at it a little closer, I really think it's a counterfeit, but I'm not positive. I did the black light test and analyzed the all the rest of those, and they all came back um, legit. But this one, only one that I'm skeptical about, but still very, very cool. Like I said, um, keep an eye out for those, and I'm going to work on updating my list and see which ones I need. And hopefully I have an update video for you sometime in the future when I piece more of this set together. So hope you enjoyed it. Leave any questions, comments down below. Um, you know, if you have some of these, if you're collecting this set, let me know. Definitely uh, look forward to hearing you guys. And enjoy um, your weekend, guys. I'll see you all very soon.